All right, so this past weekend, I completed my first marathon. Uh, I got a time in the books now. So I did the Mesa Marathon in Arizona. Um, I did a video recap of that a couple of days ago. I'll put it up on my YouTube as well. Uh, just some footage I collected throughout the weekend and of the race itself. So uh, there's also a couple really impressive uh, cactus clips in there. So if you're into that kind of thing, go check it out. Um, it's pretty good stuff. So um, speaking of good stuff, I got my, uh, my proof here. This is my uh, finisher's medal for the marathon. I only get one first marathon finisher's medal, and this is a good one. So uh, it's like a Chinese throwing star to take out the competition. So pretty proud of that. Um, I also, I raced, uh, I finished the marathon in three hours, four minutes and 17 seconds, which got me a BQ time. So qualified for Boston. They gave out these uh, luggage tags here. So um, something you know special to commemorate the, uh, the whole first marathon thing. So I've got my race bib here too. I'm gonna throw all that in like a shadow box or something, put it in the living room to annoy the wife a little bit. So um, anyways, uh, yeah, so I did the race in the uh, Nike Vaporflies. So we had these custom made. I got my, uh, my unicorn time on there, uh, sub three. That was the goal, it's still the goal. Um, it will be the goal until I, until I accomplish it. So uh, my little motivator there, I think that's cool as hell. Um, but yeah, wife got me these for Christmas. So really like them. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, my goal, my goal was a BQ for this one which uh, was a three hour, five minute. So I did that. Um, my secondary goal was like a 310. So well within that. And yeah, the sub three, um, I tried, you know, I went for it. I got really greedy with it actually. And uh, that was probably the whole demise of my marathon plan was um, just getting a little too greedy. Um, but anyways, we'll get into that in a little bit. I figure I'll make this video kind of giving like a detailed breakdown of my race um, and the event as a whole, you know, the whole, uh, my whole first marathon, you know, like, you know, like I say, I kind of only get to do this once. So uh, we'll go through it and I'll just kind of recap it all. And um, I'll pull up my Strava log too. So we'll get like um, some split breakdowns and kind of explain why I pace certain ways throughout the weight, uh, race and whatnot. But um, yeah, so the marathon itself, they did an awesome job. Uh, it was like fully staffed, um, awesome expo. Uh, we had a good time there uh, Friday night before the race. So uh, got this hat and a couple other things. Just kind of nerded out and you know, first marathon, bought like a couple shirts and whatnot. Um, but yeah, expo was sweet. I got like two different massages at the expo. Uh, so that was nice. Just kind of get like that, you know, pre-race prep going. Um, but yeah, fully, fully staffed event. They had like 14 aid stations throughout the course itself. Um, you know, just tons of volunteers. And I, I could tell it's a, it's a pretty big marathon for the area um, or just in general. Um, I think there's like seven or 8,000 people total, you know, racers. So, you know, pretty good numbers. Um, but yeah, so the course itself, uh, I'll pull up my Strava here and um, we'll kind of get some uh, some course metrics and whatnot going. Um, so yeah, okay, so I got it up here. Okay, so the course itself, it's a point to point course. So we had to get, uh, we had to take buses um, up to the starting line at, uh, and you had to be at the buses at 4.30 in the morning. And the race, it starts at 6.30 in the morning. So we had to leave the hotel at like 3.45 a.m., you know, get to the bus drop off, you know, take that up to the starting line. Then you have like this two hour window of just doing nothing, um, which I actually kind of liked because I, you know, I had some race nerves going in the morning. So, uh, you know, just kind of shake those out, do a little, you know, warm up, you know, get some blood flowing, um, some last minute fueling. And, uh, you know, I had breakfast too. So, you know, you know, I got that to digest. Um, yeah, just kind of feeling good, you know, the race starts at 630, you know, the, I think the sun came up, you know, maybe a half hour into the race. So uh, as far like temperature wise, I think it was like 50 degrees at the start. So not bad. Um, but it, it was, it was, you know, cool as hell to, uh, to run in the desert with, with the sunrise. So I, I really did like that. Um, scenic marathon, um, uh, just an awesome event. So yeah, five stars, uh, to them, the whole crew, uh, really enjoyed it. So, um, we'll, uh, break down the course a little bit here. Uh, it, it is a net downhill course. So you start at about 2000 feet and at about 1200. So you're losing about 800 feet there, but, uh, miles, um, 
miles four and a half to uh, six, uh, you get this 200 foot uphill climb. And so that's, you know, a good mile and a half climb that uh, you're just climbing and climbing and climbing. So you really had to manage that part of the part of the uh, elevation profile of the course. Um, but yeah, net downhill in general, you think that's sweet. Um, someone like me uh, with my knee reconstruction and whatnot, I was actually kind of worried about that part. When you're running downhill, you, you have to like manage the pace and almost slow, slow yourself down and you're creating this eccentric load on your knees, which you know, they refer to as like breaking. So you're like almost like stabbing your legs in the ground if you're, if you're not doing it right and you're not managing right. So I was being pretty attentive to my running form going down the hill. So like when I'd strike, I, I'd, I'd be, I'd, I try to strike as like my knees bending. So I'm not like stiff leg in the ground and just jarring my knee with that load. Um, so just being paying attention to that. So we'll get into like the start of the race here, um, how I started, um, you know, everybody told me, don't go out fast. Don't go out too fast. You know, you're, you're going to be running downhill at first a little bit here. So, uh, you know, keep, keep a check on your pace and whatnot. And, and I try to do that. Um, but at, at the start of the race, you know, everybody's adrenaline's going, you got fireworks going off. You got the first wave of people, they're, they're flying. So it's like, I'm not trying to keep up with, with anybody really. I'm, I'm keeping up with my wave of people. I'm in like, you know, kind of the sub three group. We're all taking off together. Um, everybody's, you know, we're, we're scooting along. Yeah. But, um, so if, if I were to actually look at my pace in here, you can't really go second by second, but I'm starting off maybe 620 and I, I back it down, you know, quite a way. I'm just trying to find that rhythm, find that flow. And, um, we'll call the start these first four miles because I ran these all very similar. So I started mile one, a 6.43 and then 6.40, 6.44, So, So my goal for this marathon was a sub three, which would be 6.50 pacing. So yeah, I'm starting out quick, you know, maybe 10 seconds above pace, but the way I'm managing this is uh, actually heart rate based. So I'm keeping an eye not so much on the pace I'm running, because I'm really not trying to look at my watch here. I'm just trying to go with the flow. Um, like I say, I am going downhill a little bit, so I'm trying to let the hill take me, uh, just be light on my legs, not not jar those, those knees or whatnot. Um, just trying not to destroy my legs really at, in the first you know part of the race. You know, I got you know 20, 20 something miles to go, so uh, let's preserve the body a little bit. It's my thought, but so yeah, so I'm paying attention to heart rate more than anything. And my, my heart rate's in the 150 range. And my thought for the marathon is, you know, 150, 160 range. That's kind of, you know, marathon heart rate. So that's how I'm managing the pace at the beginning. And then I get to the uphill. And um, you got to back it down. So so the way I, I manage the uphill, it's, again, heart rate base. I kept the same heart rate, you know, going up the hill. It's just low 160s, trying to match the begin, you know, the beginning portion of my race with this uphill climb. And whatever the, whatever the pace was, it just is what it is. So while I'm going up the hill, I'm actually doing, you know, 730, 740, I think 745 is about like, that was my climbing pace. And by the time I got to the top of the hill, um, I'm listening to an app uh, too while I'm running. That's kind of giving me pace updates and um, estimated finish times and whatnot. So I get to the top of the hill and, you know, it tells me, hey, your estimated finish time or, you know, the pace you're running is a 6.55. So, so what, what that means is by the time I got to the top of this uphill, any gains I made by running those 6.40 miles in the beginning, they were, you know, erased, eliminated because the, the hill took away all the gains and then some. So by the time I crest the hill, you know, in my head, hey, I'm five seconds behind pace. So my next mile... Uh, mile seven here, I do a 633, which I will admit that was running hot. You know, that's 20 seconds above pace and, um, but that's still manageable. But yeah, so I, I scoot the next few miles pretty hot just to try to catch myself up. I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I'm behind on pace. I better catch up. Um, so I do, you know, up to mile 10, I'm, you know, mile 10 is 637, mile 11, 648, mile 12, 645. And then I get to the half marathon point. So kind of my, my first hint that maybe I, maybe I did actually go out fast was my half marathon point. I ran it in a, uh, what was my effort here? You should tell me. Yeah. So my half marathon effort was a 128.35. 
And that's a PR for me in a marathon race. I, I PR'd my half marathon. So, and I PR'd it by what, a minute and a half. And the half marathon I ran uh, just three weeks ago was my previous PR. So in a, in a three week time frame, I PR'd by a minute and a half in the half marathon. So yeah, um, maybe I went out too fast, but you know, still manageable. Um, at, at this point, I still felt good. You know, it's, um, my heart rate's still, uh, where am I at here? So yeah, so my heart rate's still one, you know, in the 160 range. Um, so I'm feeling good. And the way I thought I was going to manage this race was, you know, get to the halfway point, have an even split, you know, 130. And then from the half marathon to the 20 mile point, just run steady miles at, at my 650 pace um, just to manage that time. And then the last 10K of the race, those last six miles, I'm going to be fresh. I'm going to be ready to go and I'm going to turn it up and um, just, you know, meet my goal. So so that's that was how I pictured managing the race. You know, I knew I was going to have a fast four, first four miles. I knew I was going to hit that uphill climb. And then just kind of find a way to get that, you know, half marathon, you know, even split time. So here I am at the halfway point. I'm a minute and a half above goal. And the app I'm listening to, it gives me my estimated finish time. And it, it was a, uh, your, your estimated finish time is a two hour, 56 minute, you know, something, something finish time. So I'm thinking 256, like, holy shit, like, I definitely got sub three in the bag, but my, my head starts thinking like, like not even a goal of mine here, but to qualify for New York, you need a 255 time. Hmm. Interesting. So if I manage this race to mile 20, how I'm running now, just run steady miles. By the time I get to mile 20, maybe I'm at like an estimated 256. Those last six miles, I could shave off a minute for sure. So that's what I'm going with, right? Um, yeah, uh, so we'll see why that didn't work. Um, probably, a, what, a, a mile after the half marathon point. So I'm at mile 14, mile 15. My heart rate's climbing. Um, it, it feels manageable, but it's climbing. I'm in the 170 range now. And like I say, I, I was I was figuring marathon range 160. So I'm, I'm beating 170. This is more of like a threshold heart rate for me. Um, where am I at mile-wise? So I'm still running um, 640 miles, you know, mid 640s, 647, 648, up to mile 17, up to mile 18. So at mile 18, I'm still on pace for, I think it was like a 257, 258, like, but I'm starting to like, I'm starting to feel it. Yeah. So I kind of got rid of the whole 255 finish time plan because I, I, I just didn't think that was going to happen at this point. Um, but mile 18. So you got to keep in mind, um, being my first marathon, I haven't run more than 18 miles, you know, in, in a long run yet, because my training plan actually called for 60 mile long runs. And I did an 18 miler just to get a, you know, a couple extra miles, you know, cause I, I started worrying about it 16 miles enough. Like, so I did an 18 mile and that was it. So in this race, I get to the 18 mile point. You know, I, I hit a 658 there. I kind of know I have to back it down. So I, I hit that 658, you know, start to, in my head, hey, I got to start just hitting, you know, those 650 even splits to um, salvage a sub three here. Um, but yeah, so mile, let's just say mile 18.1. My mind saying, Johnny, you've never done this before. You've never, you've never been at mile 18.1. You've never been at mile 18.2. So, so my mind's kind of like telling me, Hey, you're in, you're in no man's land here. I wonder what's going to go wrong. So yeah. So, uh, mile 19, I hit a, uh, what is this? A 656, um, mile 19 and a half. I'm starting to feel it in my legs, like, or just my whole body, you know, just kind of like some energy, you know, lack of energy, I should say. Um, yeah, like my body's not like shutting down, but it's slowing down, like for sure. Like 
this isn't like a mental thing. It's, it's my body is slowing down and I'm not sure why, because, you know, I thought I had the, the carb intake I needed. I thought I was fueling right. Um, I thought I was staying hydrated. Um, but yeah, so up, up to this point, um, my body's slowing down and, you know, I'm listening to the, that app that I'm running with. That's kind of giving me advice on how to manage the race and whatnot. So right before I get to mile 20, uh, lady comes on and she, she goes, you are now approaching mile 20. Most runners consider this part of the race, the wall, but don't worry, run it like any other mile and you'll be fine. You know, or for lack of better words, something like that. But it reminded me of the wall. And uh, I think uh, actually Pink, Pink Floyd made an album about this. They were really avid marathoners. So they, they made a whole album about the marathon wall. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Check it out. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so it reminded me of the wall and it's like, holy shit, this is what I'm going through. Like I'm hitting the wall. Like, and I thought I was immune to this for sure. Like I had the fueling down, I had the carb intake down. Uh, at this point I took a, I actually wrote it all down here. Yeah. Mile by mile 20, I took in 215 grams of carbs. Like, and, and I was estimating I need to take in about, you know, 60 to 75 grams, grams an hour. So I thought I had that down but I was actually probably a little bit above that, um, what, what I was estimated I need. So did I take in too much fuel? Um, as far, as far as hydration, I was relying on course water, like, like at the uh, aid stations, I was, I was relying on the water at the aid stations. And, uh, you got to keep in mind whenever I'm doing my long runs, you know, training wise, I'm running with like water bottles. So I always have water available to me. And during this race, I was relying on the aid stations and, you know, a, a couple times I was, I was running and I'd go to grab a water cup and the guy in front of me would, would take the last water cup. And it's like, I ain't slowing down or turning around to go grab my own measly four ounce water cup. I'll catch it at the next station. Like, like no big deal. Right. I was planning to take in like 24 ounces an hour and I was actually only taking in 12 ounces. So you know, was I hitting this, this wall or whatever, because of dehydration, I'm not too sure yet. Like, honestly, that part of the race, it's bugging me because I don't have it figured out yet. And I'm going to figure it out. Like for sure. I'll figure this out. Um, no big deal. Or maybe, maybe it's just, I went out too fast and my body was smoked at this point. And these are the, the repercussions I'm dealing with. Um, but it's just funny that it all happened at mile 20. Just like the app said, just like everybody says, you hit the wall at mile 20. And it's like, you know, I don't think it was mental for me. It wasn't like a mental thing. It was like physically, uh, yeah, you know, I was going through something here. So um, we'll, we'll check out my mile splits after uh, mile 20. I did a 710, which no big deal, but I'm throwing the sub three out the window because at this point in time, that's about where I'm at. And, uh, you know, I, I have to uh, kind of salvage the BQ at this time, you know, a 305, like, you know, I got, yeah, I got five minutes to spare in, in the next six miles, but the way my mind was working was, you know, I can't give up more than a minute a mile, you know, cause that'll put me well, well over that uh, 305. So I'm managing that I'm running, uh, let's just see what I'm running here. I'm pacing seven thirties. I get to the, I wasn't walking, you know, I wasn't walking throughout the marathon but I was running 7.30s for mile 21 to 22. I'd get to the aid station, I'd slow down, make sure I'm getting my water, you know, my water cup or, or two or whatever, make sure I'm taking all that in and I'd get to the next mile. Like I'd get to the next aid station. And it's like, I, I'd go, you know, mile, like, oh, I made it another mile. I made it another mile. I made it another mile up to like mile 25. I don't know why 25 miles into a marathon, my head saying, just stop, Johnny. Like, you're fine. Why are you doing this to yourself? Just stop. It's okay. It's like, no, shut up, dude. Like, shut up. We're finishing this. So mile 25 um, was definitely my hardest mile. In fact, I ran my slowest mile. I did a 819 for mile 25, which was awful. Um, also keep in mind too, from mile 20 to mile to the end of the race, I thought for sure I was going to puke. Like there wasn't a, a step throughout these last six miles that I didn't think I was going to puke. I was like staying to the left of the course, making sure nobody was over there. Just, just, that's just the stomach issues I was going through. 
Um, and like I say, I don't know if that's too much fueling, you know, dehydration or what, but I got to figure that out because that was, that made these last six miles brutal. Um, just, just awful, really awful. Um, but yeah, so quitting was not an option, obviously, but, um, yeah, so I picked it up for the last mile. I ran, you know, whatever, whatever the last mile was, a, a 7.30, just, just to salvage, you know, I was trying to salvage that VQ, VQ time. And, you know, I, uh, I get to the finish shoot, I see the clock, it's, it's a three hour, four minute and something seconds. So it's like, I'm trying to sprint and have that last good stride through the, uh, the finish shoot, but it's like, I, it's like I was running through sand to get to the finish and I gave it everything I had. Um, I finished the clock showed a three hour, yeah, three hour, four minute, 30 something second, but you know, going off chip time, whenever I actually crossed the starting line to take off, I actually started 17 seconds after, after the gun went off. So yeah, I finished the marathon in the three hour, uh, four minutes, 17 seconds, got the BQ time. Um, as soon as I crossed the line, I, I thought I was going to pass out. Like I was just, you know, stumbling around trying to grab something to keep me up. And uh, I actually ended up sitting down almost right away, which was probably the worst thing I could have done, but you know, better than passing out, I guess. So, uh, so yeah, so that's how I managed, uh, the race here. Um, just salvaged, um, just salvaged that BQ goal. So yeah. So what did I learn? You know, what, what's my takeaway from, from this marathon? Uh, I need to run more miles. Like I'll, I'll say that I need to run more miles at this distance. I need to train at this distance, fuel at this distance, hydrate at this distance. Like I need to figure out the marathon, you know? So these 16 mile long runs I was doing, in my head, um, for, for the time goals that I have, that's not enough. Like, it's just not, um, I should be putting in more work for this and I will, you know, I can't be too critical on myself here. Like, I feel like I kind of failed the last portion of, of the marathon, but, um, really I'm, I'm glad it didn't go perfect. I'm glad I didn't, you know, nail it. And, you know, Hey, I'm all that, like, like I'm not, I have so much to learn. And the fact that, that whole last 10k of the marathon just kind of went haywire for me like there's so much to learn there and I'm gonna figure it out like I, I will for sure figure it out I'm gonna talk to people I got some very knowledgeable friends that uh, I know they'll help me out with this and um, just kind of go over some of my numbers you know and did I over over fuel or what you know figure out what happened um, or did I, did I just go out too fast you know who knows I thought I was managing it but you know that's that's you know, maybe I should have really gone for more of a negative split pace throughout the whole race. And if I, if I do another marathon anytime soon, that's going to be my plan, you know, negative split and I go out slow and um, really try to secure that sub three. So what's next on the list? Uh, yesterday I signed up for the Cleveland half marathon. That's going to be May 22nd. So we got about three months for that. And uh, I actually got some friends to sign up for that as well. It's going to be their first half marathons and some of them even their first running race. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they manage that, um, if they want to train for it or not. You know, who knows, it's all for fun. It's uh, it's gonna be kind of cool to get some friends to uh, to race this one with me. And um, my thought process is like, I'm not so much tapering out of marathon distance training, but you, I want to use this last training block I had, get in another training cycle and go try to set a, uh, a new half marathon PR because I just PR'd in, in a full marathon for the, the half. So let's go actually race a half marathon, train at a half marathon pace and see if we could uh, do a little bit better. And I, I think I will. Um, they actually just put up the uh, the course map for the Cleveland half, actually the Cleveland full too. Um, it's actually going a, a lot more through the downtown um, area this year. So looks pretty neat. Looks like a good one to race or spectate or whatever. So really looking forward to that. Um, should be fun. That's kind of the local, you know, hometown vibe race. Um, but yeah, so as far as like the marathon world for me, like what's next, um, as far as another marathon on my radar this year, um, that's not going to come till fall or winter, you know, um, obviously Boston's on my list for next year. Um, if I get into that, you know, I got a 43 second buffer, you know, is that going to be enough? Um, do I want to improve that time? Do I just want to submit that time and see if I get it in? Um, I'm not sure yet. You know, to be honest, I'm not sure if I care enough. I'm not sweating any of this, but I'm not sure if I care enough to go hurry up and rush out and go run another marathon to improve a, you know, a BQ time. Um, 
unless it's going to be fun for me. You know, like I really like the idea of going to do like destination marathons, like go travel a bit, make a mini vacation out of mini, make a mini vacation out of it. So a marathon on my list would be the California International Marathon. So the CIM in uh, Sacramento. And that's uh, that would be in December, which is outside of the Boston um, sign up window, you know, the registration window. So even if I go run that, like that's not another chance to improve my time, but it's something that I want to go do. So I would rather go race the CIM in California versus trying to go do some local marathon to improve my time for Boston next year. But um, Boston, that, that's that's definitely on my list. Like everybody's asking me, like, are, are you going to run it? Um, it's like, yeah, you know, that's that's definitely something I want to do. Like the BQ was the goal, but I want to go I want to go run this thing. So um yeah i'm I'm excited to go do that um actually the more i talk about it, it's like i'm really thinking about like okay maybe i should go like improve this bq time to get in there um but um I, yeah i don't know you know there, there's other stuff to do like i, I still want to go around chicago so uh, but that wouldn't be until the end of next year so um yeah in the marathon world i'm not sure as far as immediate stuff, um, you know, the BMX and motocross season, that's coming up. So I'm going to focus on that quite a bit. And, um, uh, you know, I'm not slowing down my running. I'm, I'm going to be still putting in the mileage. I want to hold a steady mileage base, you know, throughout summer or whatever. Like, like if I want to get better at the marathon and all of this, like this has to be what I do now. Like I have to be holding mileage. Um, I just, I, I can't be falling off, you know, throughout spring and summer, like I usually do. So this is, um, this is definitely a, uh, a wake up, a wake up call for me. It's something that I want to go do. Um, just something that's going to be an, another piece of me to, uh, improve on and whatnot. So, yeah. So as far as the Cleveland half, um, I'll probably, you know, video some of that. I'm not, I probably won't be doing like a full race breakdown like this for all these races I'm doing. This is like the first marathon. Like I wanted to break it down, um, just kind of recap it and uh, just something that I could look back on. You know, I could, I could see, you know, where I, where I once was, you know, wherever the future holds, like come back, look at this and, uh, you know, I don't know. You're like I'm, I'm proud of the race. So, um, just kind of put in a, put in a lot of work for this one. And, um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, as far as another video, we'll keep it fun and, uh, keep them coming. And, uh, yeah. So stay tuned for what's next.